Ah, so I'm gonna see if I can. While well, I'm waiting on some people to come in, uh, I'm gonna see if I can share this over to Facebook. Well, I'm gonna invite a few people from the Instagram side first. said I failed to sin, so let's see. What's the plan B? Nope, that's not what I'm looking for. I'm over here experimenting, y'all, while I'm waiting on some people to come in because we about to get into the grand deception. We got to go and we got to bust this Scottish Rite bullshit upside the head. And the Scottish Rite bullshit ties directly to the Moorish imposters. So, I'm going to get to that in one minute. I'm just trying to see. No, there's no way I can do that from here. Okay. So, um, yesterday I put up some posts about... Um, George Washington, about uh, Albert Pike, Morals and Dogma with pictures. And well, I'm about to tell y'all, the great deception comes in because the picture that we've been being given of uh, George Washington is actually a picture of um, Albert Pike with no beard. Now, just the same with the Mona Lisa and Leonardo da Vinci. Mona Lisa is Leonardo da Vinci without a beard. Here they go with this cross-dressing shit. I hate to have to deal with that bullshit. But anyway, in the post, I also put up um, military uh, deception as being an intricate part of warfare. And um, I was going to pull it up on my other phone, but I'm just going to talk. So <clears throat> you can go back when you get out of here and look at the posts I put up last night. <clears throat> You're going to see <clears throat> pictures of um, Albert Pike with a beard, right? And they said that George Washington was clean shaped, but he wore a British wig. Now, first off, the real George Washington was born in Barbados in the islands, and he was a mulatto. The picture don't reflect that he would be roughly my complexion or only a couple of shades lighter as the mulatto of that day they weren't as bright as they are today because it wasn't as much uh, European influence on the genetic pool as it is now. Most of us don't know that we got pink folks, as they call them, in our ancestry. Well, I do, but a lot of us don't. So, um, but George Washington was originally a mulatto. Now, remember... Just as I point out a couple of critical key points. John Hansen was the first president under the Continental Congress who was from Barbados. Now, when you do a comparative analysis of George Washington as Albert Pike, from the perspective of morals and dogma, it makes perfect fucking sense. George Washington Masonic Memorial, Washington, D.C. makes perfect sense. The whole Scottish Rite, the highest ranked Scottish Rite Freemason that it was on this land at that time was um, Albert Pike. Now, when I was looking at him, I noticed that the birth dates vary. Like the George Washington birth date is um, 1700s and he's supposed to die before um, Albert Pike was born. 
But the problem that I found with that was that, one, if I superimpose a beard onto George Washington, he looks uncannily like um, Albert Pike. And I was like, well, what the hell? Why is this? So they say George Washington is the first president of the United States. And I'm like, this ain't making no sense. It's not adding up. Continental Congress, 13 years, eight, I mean, it's eight years, 13 heads of state during the transitional phase from Continental Congress to United States corporate um, constitution, right? Where, or the constitution that's written in the blood of Crispus Atticus, that's in the George Washington masonic memorial or a state capitol building one of them buildings but i noticed that they have actual black and white photographs of albert pike and they have black and white photos of some of the people that supposed to be contemporary with george washington but they don't have any black and white photographs actual photographs of george washington that caught me as i so I went back to morals and dogma. What is it? What is the play or the layout of morals and dogma as far as the Masonic Lodge taking over? Right. The morals and dogma gives the layout of how they were going to conquer the people here using the Masonic Lodge, Scottish Rite, Morals and Dogma is the blueprint for them to take over our shit. Now, you seen there was a, uh, if you go to my post, you see a, a quote by George Washington about taking the feds from the Moors. Then if you scroll way back down, you'll see that I have a post with the turkeys for Thanksgiving and it said, are you sure you know what Thanksgiving is really about? The, our ancestors, the turkey was the sacred, was a sacred bird that didn't fly. Turkeys fly until they get obese. Then they can't fly like a chicken. Right. <clears throat> and the only ones that get to the obesity level that you that they can't fly is the ones that's domesticated domesticated turkeys are overfed on purpose so they'd be easier to harvest around the celebratory season and we used to tie strings to their feet and feed them just because they'll sit there and eat like a chicken all day long until he's so big he can't fly, then we can take the string off his ankle. The same principle is putting a baby elephant on a two-ton chain that he can't break. But when he get to be an elephant, he put him on a 25-cent rope and he refused to break it. The same psychology, right? And so I'm sitting here and I'm like, in this quote from George Washington, something is missing. Why would the Moors be confused at who they are because they're not wearing the feds? That don't make sense. And then it got an obvious break in the continuity in the statement. And then I was able to piece together what was missing. What was missing is the challenge of the Scottish right to the York right. So this is the War of the Roses. The York's versus um the Hatshires, right so it's the water roses it's like the hatfields and mccoys it's the same shit the hatfields and mccoy fought so long that they end up being the same goddamn family in the end the kids start marrying each other so i'm sitting here and i'm looking at these stories and i'm like wait a minute this motherfucker is lying right this motherfucker making this shit up so I go back to the George Washington Memorial and I see that George Washington said the message is in the capstone, right? And the capstone that he's talking about is the keystone and the keystone has the key in it and the key opens the vault 
And the vault holds the secret. The vault is morals and dogma. So it's the challenge of those who were the moral and upright versus the ones who were heavily into the dogmatic religious pursuit. This is why they religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, all work together hand in hand for what we call Etruscan Moorish conquest of the world. But they ran into a problem over here with these feather wearing motherfuckers and these moccasin sandal wearing motherfuckers. So I couldn't understand why they say these Moors from Europe wore sandals when I know that wasn't the type of footwear that Moors wore in Europe. So I said, well, let me look at the, where did these motherfuckers go when they got kicked out of Europe? And then they said they sent them to the Maghrib. The Maghrib is Northwest Africa. Now, the so-called modern day dirty Moors try to tell us that this is Northwest Africa. This ain't never been Northwest West Africa in the history of the word Africa. It ain't never been called that. They can't pull up no ancient maps where they call this motherfucker Northwest Africa unless they paint it they self. They got to paint it they self and tell you it's old, but they can't do that. So when I'm putting these pieces of the puzzle together, I'm like, huh. They not mentioning nothing about feathers in here. Because we had something called the war bonnet for the chiefs. The chiefs with the feathers around their head. I'm thinking Quetzalcoatl. I'm thinking Tupac Amaru. I'm thinking Chief Sitting Bull. I'm, Chief, I'm thinking, wait a minute. Jacob undermined the red man, Esau. The ruddy red man. But that's what they described us as when they came over here. And Jacob do mean to undermine and to supplant. But Jacob is Yaqub, and Yaqub grafted a devil. <clears throat> and he grafted a devil through a breeding program. Go back to Europe. Let's go back to Europe for a minute. So they came in at Mount Sinai, Enlil and his children. And as they moved across the land, they end up establishing the Ottoman Empire. And there's something in the Ottoman Empire about the way they govern the word bay and the word day and the word these are ottoman titles of leadership and rulership right so the word bay means governor the word chief means governor some 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 surreal fishy here so the Byzantine kings arose from the Ottomans invasion into the Roman Empire and then some kind of way they became the same empire. But you don't see that. Watch me show you. In morals and dogma, the Christians have to fight the Muslims in order for the Jews to take control. And the Jews are the Jacobins and the Jacobins is Yaqub's people and Yaqub's people are Zionist Moors. This Yaqub, this Jacob is the son of Enlil. And he's still in birthrights because his mama teaching him how to be a thief. Now you got people running around, our people, the feather wearing motherfuckers now, but they dress like they in ancient motherfucking Middle East with some purple and gold shit on and they call themselves Israelites or Hebrews. But ain't none of that shit in none of our oral, oral um, legacy. None of that shit ain't coming up before 1492 on these shores. Right? So now they trying to trick us. Now remember, you got to go back to Sun Tzu, all war is predicated upon deception. And Machiavelli said that in order to um, deceive your enemies, you have to be able to first deceive 
your friends. Because if you can't deceive those closest for, uh, from you, you can forget about deceiving those that's distant from you. But if you can fool the motherfuckers that's the closest to you, right? If you can make a motherfucker think that Tupac did, you can trick a motherfucker into anything. But what do it say about the niggas that don't fall for the motherfucking banana in the tailpipe? The okie doke. Right? I'm reading the land. The land say this motherfucker ain't gone. How in the fuck is this possible? He got shot in Las Vegas. They got him on camera whooping somebody. So we investigate that shit and find there's a camera on every corner in Las Vegas at the time of the so-called shoot. So why that shit ain't on why is all of the footage owned, right, by an entertainment corporation that's stationed in Europe, in London? Like, this is don't make no fucking sense until you realize that no matter what's going on with the Tupac situation, it's telling the rest of the chiefs what's going on because all of the law books on the land is copyright in Europe. Comparative analysis. One thing reflects another thing. On a tit for tat, knock to a knock back, 360 around the board, the story tells itself, you don't have to tell it. But you got to point it out. So I'm watching the morals and dogma play out, and the dogma is the religious controversy that Noble Drew Ali warned me about. Right? Because when you read the more the religious controversy, you realize that shit don't got nothing to do with us. They brought that shit over here. We didn't do religion before Europe came. That shit don't got nothing to do with us. And we fell for it. Jesus, Muhammad, Buddha, all of them motherfuckers didn't have nothing to do with us. But it was all stolen from our legacy. It's a difference in dogma versus spirituality. It's a difference in selling a motherfucker a dream that ain't going to never fucking come true than it is for telling them how to get free, right? The codes are all in that book they call the Bible, but the Bible was never meant for mass dissemination. The Bible was originally meant to be read with the priests among the Catholics who was enforcing the contract because these priests were what you call land barons. And the land barons is the landlords. And the lords over the land supposed to be these vice lords out of Chicago off the west side. Right? And they supposed to initiate a black peakstone ranger to traverse the land to make sure ain't no imposters on the land. And that jurisdiction of goes to Malik Angel Bay. And all of this shit supposed to be sold together, wrapped up in a motherfucking package, and told to the people by the chairman of the board, who is the spokesperson for the collective of the chieftains, and they call him Larry Hoover. But why my people don't know this? This is where I'm fucked up at. Why we don't know this shit? It's in our face. They tell it to us in the movies. The rap artists tell it to you in the songs. The motherfucking blues singers was telling you back then. Right? The jazz singers was telling you about the strange fruit. What's strange about that shit? They was all chiefs. Every chief ain't a man. They only kill strategically to keep us from ever realizing who we was. Because when the chief's on the land, it does something to the soul of the people. And when it does something to the soul of the people, motherfuckers start moving and they don't know what they're doing. Some of them lash out at the chief for being the chief. Motherfucker, where you been? We been needing you for 200 years, a thousand years. Why the fuck you just getting here? I'm going to bust you upside your head for being late. Well, Johnny might come lately, but Johnny got to assess the terrain. He got to read the layout. And Art of War say, it say, know your enemy, know yourself. Victory is assured. It also say in the Art of War, 
Go not into war without assessment of the terrain because you need to know if you're going to take the high ground or the low ground. You're going to need to know if they're coming through the ravine or over the hills or through the valleys. If you don't know the terrain, you are at a distinct disadvantage. That's Art of War Basics 101. So when I'm traversing across the land and I'm meeting all of the people on the land and putting in my work, so witness everywhere I've been, because we do it, we need that's how we roll over here. Our culture is here, but it's somebody else's culture that don't belong laying on top of our shit. Right? Just giving gang unity, God. So, um, how do I get this across to our people that these motherfuckers look like us, but they ain't us? I'm going to tell you how to know them. And some of your favorite activists, some of your favorite activists was on their side and we didn't even know it. So their job was that at the end, if we don't know who we are, they were supposed to send us into a blind rage against their smoking mirrors, cat's paws, or what we call pale skin Europeans. And they was going to be the ones telling us to kill him and shed his blood because that's what they do everywhere they go. You are not a my father, you are your father, a thief. He was a liar and a murderer from the beginning. Remember that? They talking about Enlil. Go back to the Old Testament and look at the dirt he was doing. So they already telling us that they own some bullshit, right? But we not seeing who they are. So they trying to steer our perception using racism, sexism, classism, uh, miseducation, right? And media to mislead us down the wrong path on purpose. Sooner or later, one of these chiefs is going to have to tell y'all what's going on on the land. It's time to give y'all what we call the gorilla knock for Larry Hoover. Right? Which is the hardest knock it is. That means everybody knocking. Now, I can't tell y'all what to do. We already did a cyber parade. We fucked up the algorithms. That's why they pretending to go to war in the Middle East using footage out of wars from... I mean, why they t pretending to go to war in Europe while they using the footage from the wars from the Middle East. But we ain't paying that. We're not watching that. We're not that perceptive. We don't see that the news, mainstream media, is using old Slogolai Milosevic footage to tell us that it's a war. We're not seeing that they making whole fucking movie sets. The windows ain't even broke. But the cars flipped over. Those little subtleties we don't catch. You know, my job is to catch that shit and point it out. So I got to figure out because now I didn't did everything I could to let y'all know was how to get the imposters off the land. They know who the chiefs is. When we start calling relentlessly for the chiefs, then these motherfuckers gonna crumble. But in the meantime, it's in slow roll motion. That means that it's a tall building fall and it looked like it's falling slow until that motherfucker hit you or you try to escape it. Right? We looking at this shit play out. All these motherfucking puppet masters behind the scenes. But we're not seeing what they telling us because we watching the distraction of the mainstream media, but the citizen news is still reporting this shit. Trump's still telling you he the president. He's still telling you that it was a fraud in place. He's still telling you they got caught. We got at least three states to decertify the election, right? which is enough to do a full-fledged investigation, but the investigation was already a carryover from the Obamas and the Bushes. 
And Obama was George Herbert Walker Bush, favorite little African, his favorite little jungle bunny, right? And he was the leader of the Illuminati on our side of the water from North and South America, Central America. It was his brainchild to make one currency called the Amero. Look it up, right? It they wanted to do a NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement, right? That's so that they can consolidate this whole region under George Herbert Walker Bush. And he got caught. And that's why on the note that he left, he said they know everything, motherfucker, because we don't need pen and paper to tell the message and to get the message from the other chiefs. We all know what's going on on the land. Spooked by the dough, motherfuckers. He going to tell us where everything y'all got going on on the inside. The spook by the dough feeding that information to the chiefs on the land. You think Geronimo Pratt was just named Geronimo because it sound cool? Geronimo researched y'all shit from asshole to appetite. You shouldn't have never put him in there and motherfucker let him on the inside, stupid motherfuckers. You don't never give a strategist the motherfucking keys to strategy and think he just going to lay down and take that shit. He going to pass the message where it need to be and it's going to get where it got to go when it need to be there. Right? So, <clears throat> Asada and the BLA, they, they, they was, you know, that's her shit. But you can't use the enemy's method to evict the enemy because then you are playing the game by his rules. This is our rules. Each one teach one. We all going to reach some. You can tell it how you want to tell it, but we going to tell it how it is. <clears throat> These sisters, y'all got the power. It's starting to warm up. White dresses, fresh water. Call my old shoon. Because in order for shoon to come in, motherfucking Ogun going to kick this bitch clean down. When y'all start doing them fresh water rituals, 369, Three adolescent girls pre-puberty, six in the mid-range, and uh, nine beyond menopause. Three, six, nine. Activate that motherfucking energy on their ass and bust them upside their head and do it on your terms when you feel like how you feel like doing it. Big mama home. She waiting on y'all to wake up and realize that she home. But ain't nobody knocking on her door. So you got everybody, all of the uh, big brother and them just sitting there waiting. They can't do nothing until y'all activate the motherfucking role. Y'all got to call them. You know, the motherfuckers relentless on this free Larry Hoover shit. And free Larry Hoover mean free Chief Malik Angel Bay. And free Larry Hoover mean free all political prisoners. Free Larry Hoover mean free Malachi York. Free Larry Hoover mean free Mumia. Free Larry Hoover mean bring a side of Shakur home. Free Larry Hoover mean restore the matriarchy. Free Larry Hoover mean secure the children. We got traitors in the mix. They in our community. They look like us, but they ain't us. And all you got to do is watch. Because they're going to badmouth the righteous and they're going to fall in the aftermath. So when they're putting, they, putting people's name on their lip, if they don't understand what they're doing, let them suffer the motherfucking wrath. And I don't care how y'all get it. I want to smoke. But we, we brain banging now. So I got to enlighten y'all to some things y'all never thought to look at. And right now, it's... The reality of the matter is that the painted pictures of George Washington is nothing but beardless pictures of um, of uh, morals and dog Albert Pike from Morals and Dogma, and also he got a couple more what you call pseudonyms. See, that's how they get y'all with pseudonyms, fake names, switching, take the beard on, take the hair off. Take the, put the hair on, take the beard off. Oh, switch your rude ass motherfuckers. Flip the mirrors and they can't hide. Right? Because there's just key factors. 
And all this shit, if it don't match, if it don't fit, what what Johnny Cochran say? If it don't fit, you must have quit. This is why they keep this George Washington Memorial in the forefront of the people's mind, because it's something there. It's something there. What is it? It's the flag. It's our flag. That fucking five pointed flag, star flag from the Moorish Science Temple is not the real flag. The facsimile of the flag, the United Nubian Nations got that motherfucker. So if anybody know young elder, a young elder, tell him Malachi say roll out the lecture on the flag. That's what he need to do for uh, for pops. Baba Yanun say roll out the lecture on the flag so they can understand that they stole our flag and gave us a false flag attack on a series of false flag attacks. They could never honor a treaty in the first place because we never signed any treaties. We've been at perpetual war. We didn't, we've never been to a negotiating table, us. Or the, the feather wearing motherfuckers. Right? So all of the shit they doing. So we went into a conjure war with the Moors, the, the conquistadors, the Moorish Zionist Jews. We went to a conjure war. And during the conjure war, George Washington, Albert Pike, motherfucking Scottish right usurpers came in because they knew we'd have amnesia until the end. And they was trying to solidify their position using the Roman keys of Babylonian money magic and bloodletting rituals and simulated blood sucking acts and native vampires, but we the ones that wear the wolves and we ain't never had no motherfucking peace. Right? So this is the 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 uh Ukrainian flag is to point your ass to the Barbados flag where George Washington from. And once you realize that George Washington was a mulatto from Barbados and he was uh, of of olive tone brown hue that he could not possibly be this pale motherfucker they paint telling us is George Washington. And the George Washington from Barbados last name wasn't Washington but Wachita. Right? And he was one of the Yamasi mound builders, and then they didn't replace him as John Hansen. That's where the trick came in. Because the fake John Hansen picture, the pale guy, is another rendition of an Albert Pike um, face off, where he took his face off, shave his beard at a different age. They fucking tricked the shit out of us, y'all. They tricked us so good that we arguing among ourselves that we the same motherfuckers that came over here and invaded us when we the ones got invaded. Mm -hmm. We will bloodthirstily fight each other. We went to take, we had to take their shit over just like they was trying to take ours over. We, they not going to never win that kind of shit. This is the home of the voodoo. The bird clan. Hovering through. This is a motherfucking raven production. The black bird. Who got the message from the blue bird. On the knock to the knockback, on the flip to the turnaround off of tarot reading oracle. Y'all motherfuckers. Woo, they got us good. I'm t they got us so good, I have to admire the genius of their deception and the effect that it had on our people. I can't believe they was this motherfucking good and got us fighting for everything that ain't going to serve us. We can't get reparations because we already at home. Right? We can't get reparations because slavery never really actually happened like they told us. We didn't come on no fucking ships. So we not eligible. That's why the Japanese got it after World War II. 
That's why the motherfuckers in Germany gave it to the so-called Jews after World War II. We not eligible. You know what we eligible for? Season every goddamn thing from pole to pole. From prime meridian to prime meridian, 360 around this bitch. We can seize all that because we the earth born. Anything on earth, possession is nine tenths of the law. Right? And position is nine tenths of the game. So nine over nine, I mean, that shit is a whole. So we in possession and position. <laughs> we in position by right. That means that we fall on the right hand of the mother. These stupid motherfuckers fall on the right hand of the father. The father don't run this bitch down here. But he run this bitch for mama. Y'all don't even catch that. The father don't run shit down here. But he run this bitch for mama. So any of y'all getting mama way you have to deal with the father. And when you got to deal with the father, you not dealing with no regular motherfuckers. We the elders now. I'm the wrong nigga to put the elder title on because that's when the bay, the bay bay, take over the L, the elders who failed the game. Hey, the feathers. It's Thanksgiving. You can't take nothing from us. But we can take all this shit from y'all. This our shit. But as long as we ain't understanding that this is our shit, then we subject to let you pretend to be in power just a little while longer until the people wake up. But this is a done deal. Don't ask me. Send your motherfucking Channel 2, 4, and 7 news to go talk to Minister Farrakhan and ask them how long they got. He can tell you to the minute. Because the Grand Matriarch got a day to show. And before she saw, we got to see three kings. He married to her, the highest ranking matriarch on the land. So send him to ask, uh, catch motherfucking Mustafa. Hey, when your mama going to take this shit back? Send your reporters from the Washington Post and the New York Times and the L.A. Times, from the Chicago Sun Times and any other times you can find to go ask them. This shit is over with. The imposters has been crushed at their own motherfucking game. The deception has been overturned inside out. That shit was turned into compost. Now we finna reap the flowers. They should have never dumped shit on no farmers because we know what to do with shit. But they keep saying these country boys is dumb. We ain't dumb. We just move at a whole other frequency than you motherfuckers and we seem out of the place to y'all. But we far from dumb. Right? I don't have a country draw because I'm a country boy that blew up in the city. That's how you motherfuckers missed me. That's how you missed me. Hidden in plain sight because I was never running from you motherfuckers. And I wish y'all had caught me when I was gangbanging because I'd have lit this bitch up. But since we brain banging now, I'm lighting this bitch up. So what it is. These Mississippians from the Delta. No, not the Delta of the of Nile in Egypt, but the Delta of the Mississippi, nigga. Flip the map. Look at that shit. It's the same motherfucking place. We just went over there to set up an observatory to watch you motherfuckers and how y'all move so we can preload our motherfucking children how to overcome this shit at the right time. And y'all motherfuckers then fucked up and they didn't ask the wrong mother to, motherfucker to answer the question. Unravel the deception. They lied to us. They they raped us physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. That shit hurt it. The only thing hurt now is we continuously falling for this shit, and I'm telling y'all the way out. Stop participating in all of these systems. So we can establish our systems unless y'all want to be part of that satanic new world order, adrenochrome, baby sacrificing under the name of Pizza Gate, all that shit. I ain't with that shit. So I got to tell y'all how it is. This is how it is. These motherfuckers 
can't deceive us no longer because I'm going to see through it. It's just, it ain't a matter of when. I know if it's a matter of when. I'm going to find the motherfucker. I'm going to sniff that motherfucker out like a bloodhound motherfucker. Gone like a rabbit through the cone. Y'all know nothing about that shit. Right? They put the shit in the cartoons. Right? So we don't even know our people no more. Like, I have to tell y'all so y'all know ODB was Chief Crazy Horse. Right? I got to tell y'all Pimp C wasn't just no motherfucking rapper. The nigga was one of the motherfucking chiefs on the land and he was what you call a moral counselor to the rest of the chiefs to make sure that we ain't doing no motherfucking shit that we ain't got no business doing. And if he catch us doing it, he got to go tell the rest of the chiefs to put this nigga in check so they can lock his ass up like Nature Boy for doing that dumb shit. Hey. Somebody had to be the moral upright motherfucker. It ain't me because I want blood. I want blood too motherfucking bad to be the moral upright. That's Pimp C motherfucking job. <clears throat> Jay Prince's job is to teach you motherfuckers the art and science of respect. He's talking to the other chiefs. This is what this is how we do. Each one teach one. He established the greatest position just on respecting and re giving and receiving respect to show you how to use that shit. Master P, No Limit Soldier, told y'all, look out for the ice cream man. Yep, I used to be the ice cream man. But what I was selling wasn't that motherfucking sticky of the icky powder. I'm going to tell you this. Master P is the business counselor out the Southwest. And Southwest is from Louisiana West. That's his job. Catch the chiefs that's trying to establish themselves and teach them the business side of the game so that the motherfucking enemy can't capitalize on them. Right? The same job in the Northeast, that's the same dad's job. All he got to do is do his job. That's it. Y'all looking at motherfuckers, y'all... Y'all so deceived, you can't sell the difference between the soldiers we sent in to recover the shit and the motherfuckers that's motherfucking doing the dirt. Kevin Gates, the chief. All you got to do is listen to him. Just listen to him. He don't talk like regular street niggas, but he from the street. T.I. is supposed to teach the other chiefs motivated hustle mentality. That's all he's supposed to do. He's supposed to teach motivated hustle mentality to the chiefs in the South. Everybody got a job. This chief not going to do that chief job if he's present to do it himself. But if the, the chief that's job it is not present, then all of the chiefs going to pick up a little bit to make sure we don't fall behind. Yep. Snoop the man right now. Call it how it is. Snoop the man right now. He the man. He the that's that's big Tookie. That's big Tookie guy. And and uh that's Nipsey Hustle guy. <clears throat> Freeway Ricky Ross was set up from the word go. It's not even a secret. The government ain't even hiding it from y'all that they set up Freeway Ricky Ross, that he was buying the drugs from the motherfucking DEA the whole time, and he didn't even know it. That's called entrapment. He was never supposed to got a day, and he was supposed to have qualified immunity. But we don't know how to stand up for our people because we're trying to follow the system that they got in front of us, and the system is all it is is dogma. They don't never honor nothing that's in our benefit in the system. Why? Because sooner or later, we got to realize that system has nothing to do with us. And as long as the system has nothing to do with us, guess what? It don't, it don't work for us. It can't possibly work. You can't expect something that was a, a, a outfit that was made 
for Shaq to fit your ass. It, it's not made for you. It's made for Shaq. Every now and then, somebody that's in the size bracket of Shaq might be able to look decent, but it still ain't going to look good on that motherfucker as it do on Shaq because that's his outfit. This is their system. The system is never going to do anything for us because it has nothing to do with us at all. Right? So, um, that's the main gist of what I wanted to talk about. Um, I think I got a timer on my live, so I'm going to let a couple people in, ask some questions, or just chop the game up. But we ain't falling for the banana in the tailpipe. We see this shit. So I'm taking the... Uh, Taking the yeah. right. Oh my god! I can't believe I finally got in. What's going on? How I, you doing? Tell I, us your name and where you calling from for the people to know. Oh, I'm from Newark. I'm I'm straight from Newark, Newark, New Jersey. Home to oh, it's the side of Shakur. It's the side of Shakur, not. Come on. Side of Shakur. I want you to talk about something. Go and drop it on us. I'm listening. Nah, what you was just talking about, man, I've been, I've been getting so many downloads about this media shit, man, and people just, I, I, I don't know if we need to, I, I, I know that people really understand it, but like, we're talking about on the mass level, mm -hmm. social media cleanse, we really got to cleanse from, from social media, we got to cleanse our, our chakra, our heart chakra, for real, for real, because the media got us scared, and even just re and just just going on and it, it dawned on me like you know we gotta we gotta we got the freedom of press but the freedom of press is completely different from media so i don't know if you want to talk about that and break it down because mainstream not, mainstream media is a government controlled entity they get their information from only two places one is called the Associated Press, and one is called Reuters. Both of them was established by CIA assets. Yep. William so, Cole. Go ahead. So they, they're going to continuously use mainstream media as a disinformation campaign and a propaganda tool until the people realize what, what's being done. All we got to do is just stop all movement. Yep. Just stop all movements. Don't buy their gas. Don't do nothing. Stop. But we ain't going to do that because everybody worried about the almighty dollar. And that's what they was banking on. The love of money. That's poverty poverty make a motherfucker thirsty. Like abstinent makes some of them chicks at the club act funny. Too much abstinence and she's trying to leave with the first motherfucker on that she can get on his iron. Right. That she right. right. So for right. so all that poverty, the abstinence from wealth and, and substance. Nobody over here was ever poor to these motherfuckers came. Right. We didn't even have a poverty line. That that didn't even exist in our reality. Now we talking about homeless people. Ain't no such thing as homeless people. Everybody, if you ain't got no work, go to Big Mama House. She, go she, gonna, right. she, gonna take, she gonna take you in and she gonna put you up. Facts. Everybody know what that means. Big Mama gonna take you in. She'll put you up. She got space. She gonna make space. She, she gonna, gonna make room. Yes, yeah, room. What right. Big Mama gonna say? Oh, well, come on, baby. We gonna make do. Yep. Mm -hmm. We gonna make we do. All, some of the babies might have to eat off the same plate, but I promise you it'll be enough for them all to be full. Yep, yep. Sleeping head to foot, you know, in the same mm -hmm. bed, on the floor, whatever, whatever. And that's just how it go, right? Now mm -hmm. they got us so selfish and mm -hmm. we so traumatized from the ones that look like us busting us upside our head that we don't even trust each other no more. I can't. That shit is wild. And that when we is. trusted them motherfuckers, they raped our babies, and they still doing it, and never mm -hmm. stopped. Never stopped. Can you do me? Can you talk about 
right? Because I was reading Nicomachean Ethics, and I, it's funny because I read this book in college, and I didn't. Let me see the cover I, of that. I don't know if I read that one. Nicomachean Ethics. It's um, it's by written by Aristotle, one of uh Socrates' students. You know, Plato. Yeah, I know who Aristotle is. I don't think yeah. I read that particular book though. Okay, so this 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 I I think um I think you might find it interesting. Um, I was just reading it just because I picked it up two years ago. I was in Atlantic City and it, they had a bookstore and the bookstore was outside and I was I was like they just got books outside. And then when I went in, he was like, yeah, let's, we go by the honor system because ain't nobody stealing books. I was like, yeah, that's a fact. Ain't nobody stealing no books. So, you know, I just picked it up. But then I got back into reading it, you know, getting some downloads or whatever. And someone told me to read it. So I was reading through it. And it's really crazy because when we when we learned about Greek, like the Greco-Roman and all of the shit, they, we, we learned that our society, Western culture, was mimicked off of that. And I get into reading about... Socrates and we don't talk about his trial and Socrates was a nigga he was over there and and created this <laughs> created this ideology that people couldn't govern themselves right and because he had this ideology and all his students he never it, it reminded me of what you was talking about with um what's that helter skelter uh uh what's his Charles name Manson. Charles Manson, where Charles Manson wasn't necessarily the person to say it or or tell these people that they should, you know, take over or whatever, but that's what ended up happening. And Socrates got put on trial. So if you I don't know if you've ever read like some books from Plato about the about the trial of Socrates, but they basically was saying that he promoted his students to cause an uproar and seize the entire Athens, Greece, and, and overturn their system. And what ended up happening was on his trial, the people were saying like, you know, you can't do this, but they blamed him. They charged him for, with impiety, not believing in the gods and disrespecting the gods. It wasn't because, and, and, and people tried to say that it was because he was um, corrupting the minds of the youth and telling them that they needed to govern the masses because the masses can't think for themselves and it was funny because they also said that socrates like his wife he had a wife and kids and none of them showed up right none of them showed up to his trial and it later in the books it was saying that his wife was upset because socrates was often found playing with little boys and he was having sex with little boys that was in his group and they just they <coughs> Up with him so it was wild to me i'm like yo why how the fuck did we like i've heard this <coughs> it registered me these are the same people that took this culture from over here and put this shit over here and it's the same shit that they've been doing the shit is wild this is why so we the boy lover culture or they called it that's that's roman right Facts. let's get into so let's get into Rome. Since we since we busting these motherfuckers in the Badusi, let's bust them. Rome. Okay, so the Romans, remember I was talking about the Ottoman Empire uh, merging with the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Rome was established by Etruscan Moors. Mm. Mm -hmm. They got kicked out of the same place they got sent back to. That's why they couldn't go there before. They, that's why they came here. Mm. Now, if you remember, straight across the Pillars of Hercules from Northwest Africa is Spain. Right. You can literally stand in Spain and see Northern Africa. See Northern Africa, facts. And vice versa. Mm -hmm. All right, now, they got kicked out of Africa for uh, violating the, the laws and the rules of Mother Earth. Mm-hmm. For causing mischief and bloodshed everywhere they went in Africa, and they was not from anywhere in Africa, right? And no place was their home. They were a nomadic people. This is why Yahweh promised them a homeland, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to give you the promised land. We're the land of the promise. Bullshit, because Thoth ain't buying that shit. But we're going to go ahead with that story. Now, Abraham's children 
um, is promised this by Yahweh in the so-called biblical story. Where in the fuck did this story come from? When you trace the story back, the promised land story go all the way back to Sumer and what's called the Anunnaki Wars. Mm. Where Sumer, S-U-M-E-R, the Sumerian Empire. And when you read about the Anunnaki Wars, I mean, the Anunnaki Wars, you see that it was first settled by Iliu, and then because he lost the fight to Anu the, uh, for the seat, what they call the highest seat, which is the Galactic Council male god highest seat. Mm -hmm. Right? The only seats higher than that is female, all female. Right. That was when you were talking about he challenged it. It was like a father, ch a son challenging the right. father. Actually, right. Okay. They, well, they was twins. They was twin brothers. Well, yeah, you gave that example, though. It was like somebody yeah. challenged. Right. Oh. So anyway, Anu beat his ass. Iliu got ousted. And then he went to the furthest reaches of space in search of somewhere to call home. Mm. He came to Earth. And um, he still telepathically linked to Nibiru and Anunnaki. He now know that they searching for something, that the presence of the people from Earth being here, a side effect produces it called gold. Mm. Just as being here, that's why they call us the golden ones. Thanks. Right? Now, telepathically, he let them know, hey, if I can be forgiven for challenging that new for the throne, right, um, I can give y'all as much gold as y'all need to repair the infrastructure on Nibiru. This is Enlil talking. Nope, this Iliu. This Iliu talking, okay. All right, now, this is Anu's twin brother. This is who Anu ousted for power on Nibiru. Okay. Right? So he's trying to offer up a peace offering. This is how they even come here. Mm -hmm. When he offer up the peace offering, Anu get clearance from the Galactic Council, but it was one problem. The rules here was different. This is, wasn't a restricted will universe. Free will, right. Okay. Right. And so they had to let them know before they came here, you can't do nothing to them unless you make known to them anything that you do. Everything is recorded. Mm. It's in our face on a regular basis. Because they following the rules, but we ain't. Okay, got you. It's in our face on a regular basis. That's what they're supposed to do because they playing by the game or playing by that rule. Because it's a free right. will. But we ain't playing by the rules because to as a person with free will, you are supposed to always test to see if you, is this in agreement with who you are as a person? Whether it's me or anybody else talking, that's why you don't take sides. Right. Right. Soon as you start taking sides, you forgot how to be a god. Mm. Mm. So they right. got you in a series of loops of side taking all the way through your waking up. Right. And as long as you're taking sides, you will never get your god powers back because you don't know who you are. Mm. Right. Mm. <clears throat> so Stop taking sides. Take sides with your inner self, your higher self. Right. Check out the receipts to see if they valid. Right. Right. If you see in the receipts that the receipts is valid, follow that narrative until you find new information that can take you to a higher level to see the problem even higher. Right. 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 And that's why I'm telling everybody that I know you have to do a cleanse. You have to, if even if you're not, even if you gotta get on your social media because it's hard for some people. They wake up, the first thing they grab is their phone. Even if you have to, don't comment on nothing, don't like nothing, don't don't nothing. If you gotta look for information, okay, but 
and I'm gonna do a whole live. I'm trying to, you know, just get back out there, whatever, with my shit. But nah, I feel you. this is this is taking sides is pointless because once you understand that it's duality, you can pull from anywhere. You can get information from anything, but it really comes from what you are resonating with. You know what I when mean? You, right. So when you get the information and you stop taking sides. It starts patching you in like an operator on the old school switchboard into the cash records. Because mm. if you don't believe none of this shit a motherfucker tell you, you got to go find it for your own satisfaction. Your higher self going to bring you the right answer. The right answers, right? That shit just going to be... In it can only... That's why they say you can't lie to yourself. You can lie to everybody else, but you can't lie to yourself. Why they tell you that? Because they have to. Mm. That have to be common knowledge that you can't lie to yourself. Why? Because if at any point you ever wake up to the realization that your higher self can go find the answer, you send your higher self for the answer, it can only bring you the right answer because that's the rules of the universe. Mm -hmm. You can't mm -hmm. lie to yourself. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest rules. Why is that there? Because deception is a viable form of warfare. Mm. It's absolutely part of the Eternal War catalog and all the Kashyyyk records through different creations. That's always been there. That's why our greatest war philosophers has to tell us that warfare entails great deception. Mm -hmm. So what's the best way to keep the conquered conquered? Never let them know that they was conquered. Never let them know that they was conquered. That's Always it. make them believe they somebody else. Right? And if they ask questions, tell them the truth, but tell them 10 lies to cover it. Winston Churchill said, the truth is so valuable, it must be carefully guarded by a ring of lies. By a ring of lies. Have you ever heard of William Lutz? And he wrote yep. a double speak. Can you talk about that? I, I found that really, that was another download that just popped up out of the clear blue sky for me. You talking I'm about double, about double speak? Double speak, yeah. That's when, you, so a word in English, the English is created to, as a language of deception. The original English language only had about 300 words in it. Mm -hmm. And it was written by the pygmy peoples of Africa. And they went to go teach the so-called Irish, English, and the, uh, Scottish, the language. That's where they get the language from. Ah, uh, got you. Okay. So, right. So this is why they say when you do a linguistic study, all the languages track trace back to Africa. Right. Greek, <clears throat> the language of Greek was written to establish the first university on the Isle of Crete for the Greece Empire. Mm -hmm. Greece was Hellenistic, meaning matriarchal at this time. Mm -hmm. When they say Hellenistic, because the goddess Helen was the matriarch of the empire, okay. right? Mm -hmm. So when the Romans conquered them, they put uh, um, Greco in front of Roman to mm -hmm. give the Greeks the impression that they had won the war against the Romans and that they had usurped the Roman Empire. Mm, right. But it was actually the other way around. Round, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, because they switched out the goddess Helen and gave the name Helen to a man in Rome, mm -hmm. in the Pantheon. Right. They okay, so that's called replacing the gods or defacing the gods. Defacing the gods, which is what, yeah, yes, go ahead. All right, now, this is the story of Medusa getting her head chopped off. Mm. Medusa, not a name. Most of us don't know it's a title of a priestess. Mm. Medu is 10. Sa is a birth priestess. And that's coming from the, right from Egypt. Mm. All right. So if the Sa priestess at the 10th rank, Right? That's the equivalent of us saying number one. Mm -hmm. Because they counted in small increments, they counted from 10 to 1. Okay. We count from 1 to 10. Right. So the medu or the number 10 
Thy priestess is the leader. Now, when they go to, when she go to Egypt and they come from all over the world for conventions and they meet with the grandmother, what we call her Osset, mm -hmm. right? They call the Sibyls. The Sibyls are the ladies that's the wise ones, mm -hmm. right? Those who are uh, ain't Soph or Sophia, mm. right? Right. So these wise women form a <clears throat> circle around what they call the Black Madonna, mm. right? Who's sitting on her earth seat as the queen of heaven and earth, and she's all dressed in black because she's mimicking Big Mama. In the flip, as above, so below, all of the women that are coming to see her, all of the priestesses, you don't just got birth priestesses, you also got priestesses of Sekhmet. Right. Right. Which is mm -hmm. the cat lodges, which is totem based. You got the priestesses of the bird clans, which is Tehuti, which mm -hmm. is also totem based. Mm -hmm. Right. So, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So now she got all, and they got it all dressed in white. She's the only one allowed to wear black. Right. She is represented in the zodiac as Tawa Earth or Tawa Ret, mm -hmm. the great hippopotamus, and is right in the ceiling. So you see in all of these stars, right? Mm -hmm. So the congregation of the stars of God is a ritual that takes place on Earth when you're raising the grand matriarch back to prominence. Mm, okay. How do you know who the grand matriarch is? Most of the elite, most of the following. Most it's of the it, No, because you could have you could have an imposter. Like Queen Elizabeth was a fucking imposter. Uh, an imposter. I was just telling my son now. I was like, you know, her, her, her husband's not a king. You know that, right? Like. He was like, no. I was like, nah, he's Prince Philip, not King Philip. He can't be a king. But, okay. So Pris. Pris Philip. Pris. <laughs> As in Prissy? Prissy ass. <laughs> but look. So, yeah. Uh, if what you read the culture, mm -hmm. the culture, the culture identifies who she is by, by works. Okay. By suffrage. Um, and by connections. Okay. What that mean is her life workers show it, what she's been through in her life, what scrutiny she's been under, mm -hmm. and then how many other matriarchs feel about her like they do about their own mama. Now, it ain't got nothing to do with us. We right. just got to read the culture to tell the women what they be, what y'all doing subconsciously, y'all don't remember. Mm, okay. Okay. Right? So, uh -huh. now, so when you look at, she got the most matriarchs under her direct call. Mm -hmm. The further her reach, right? The further her reach, the higher her, her position. Not because she better than nobody, because she's not going to see herself that way. Right. She ain't gonna never say I'm better than you. That's she, right, right. She ain't gonna never turn her nose up at you and she gonna always do what she can to find time for the sisters that need her. Mm hmm Right? So she don't have a big eye little you complex. Facts. Right? So now, now that you know that, now you gotta look at what kind of spotlight has she been under? Meaning, how has she been portrayed in the public domain by the collective of the people on the land. Is there a particular time period for measuring that? Because everybody, and I'm just asking because everybody, 
goes through a phase in the beginning of their life where they're learning shit. You know what I mean? So are we talking about after they're committed or initiated or self initiated, whatever? Well, it, when you look at it, it's gonna it's gonna always it's just like uh, water turning into steam. Okay. Okay. It's just, everybody go. It's like cream rising to the top. Right. So you might find a whole bunch, like for instance, somebody might say it's Winnie Mandela. Well, Winnie Mandela, coming to find out, picked the same person I picked. Right, right, right. Right. Mm -hmm. Amel mm -hmm. DeMarcos picked the same one I picked. Mm -hmm. Okay. So of all of these gotchas just picking the top, everybody else. Right. Them, so gotcha. now, over here on our land, this would be one that was picked by Aretha Franklin. Mm. She is she was the queen of music. Uh-huh. Right? She would have been picked by um uh Coretta Scott. They call her the the, the mother of civil rights. Mm-hmm. Right? She would also be picked by the Christian community, by the women. By the That's women. The, okay. Right, so this is her associational interpersonal connections with the wives of ministers. Okay, okay. So the rule is most loved, most respected. Right? How do I hit your heartstring? The children. That's most loved. How do I treat you when you're in my presence? Mm. that's most respected mm -hmm. right so now the most loved most respected will have the most grand matriarchs or matriarchs under her direct call mm -hmm. matriarchs of prominence and positions of government entertainment or any any system they establish the ones gotta have equal respect that would be classified as her enemy because they are working for a different group of people. Can but they still it? got the respect for her. What do you mean by what do you mean by that? What you just said? Okay, so it's like being on a on the battlefield. You got generals that respect other generals even though they fighting each other. And each other. Got you. Okay, cool. So matriarchs on the other side, on the wrong side also got the respect facts okay so okay. now she got the enemy respecter we mm -hmm. respect her right she got mad matriarchs across the land respect her mm -hmm. now the last ones to show respect is the men and how do we do it we call her out in the open three kings walking go put her on her throne Mm -hmm. And as soon as y'all do that, we get rid of these motherfuckers. Mm. So what do we do? The chiefs, that's males, that's men. Each one teach one. All do our part. We don't have to like each other. We don't have to agree with each other. As long as we do our part as best we can, according to what we know and understand. Mm. The one who knows the most is required to do the most. The strongest one is required to carry the heaviest load. Right? Giving me some down. You giving me some knockback sign, but I right. I hear you. I hear you. So you can't put the heaviest load on the weakest motherfucker because he's gonna crumble. Facts. So you got to put the, the heaviest load on the ones who can carry the load. So when you iron all that out, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a clear-cut winner as the matriarch over here. Right. Right? It's a clear-cut winner. I know who the grand matriarch is, the Black Madonna on this land. Mm-hmm. Right? All races increase the colors of mother's lover. That was enough for me right there. Me too. Me too. But that had, wasn't all. But that wasn't it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. See? It's, it's the, not just all of the mothers of each race, creed, and color across political lines they loved her. Across religions. Across religion. Their religion didn't interfere with them love her. It's only one mother of the righteous. Right. 
And exactly. if you look in Islam, they say the name of the mother of the righteous is Khadijah. Mm -hmm. Mother Khadijah was named Mother Khadijah by Mother Clara, the matriarch that preceded her in the same position and rank. Mm. Facts. So, you talked, about, talked about hiving. How the women yeah. of Mm -hmm. So the 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 Sybil <clears throat> the Sybil ceremony is the ceremony for raising the grand matriarch. Mm -hmm. All it is is the women get together and they do exactly what they was doing in the Middle East. That's a woman's ceremony. Everybody not supposed to be there. That's why I don't work for them. Mm. You, the men ain't supposed to be in certain stuff. But the men had to join in in order to preserve the secret so I could tell y'all where to find it at. Got you. Okay. Right? So the matriarch, the matriarch ceremonies is the entire Catholic church. There wasn't supposed to be no male priest there. They supposed to be Buddhists. They supposed to be Shaolin. They're not supposed to be where the Catholic Church is, which is actually the House of Sekhmet. Right? The House of Sekhmet is, that's why it's called Catholic, because it's they telling you it's a cataholic. The cat lodge. The cat lodge is under Sekhmet. Mm. Which include the Panther Lodge, mm -hmm. the Lynx Lodge, and all of the tribal totems that use the cat symbol around the world. <laughs> my daughter here I'm a, I, I appreciate this I'm going to let you get some other people um, I'm going to kick it with you this is this is you done, you done gave me a few things to, to go back to the, to the drawing board and read and read read through revisit um, shout out to you man free Larry Hoover y'all already know free bring bring Asada hands off Asada all of that all of that so I appreciate you Rob sure. Yeah, thank you, sweetie, for coming in here. All right, thank this you. energy out for me. Yeah, facts. You already, <laughs> you already. All right, sweetie, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Okay, we're going to take one more caller in here, see what you want to poly about. Come back here. Money balls. You there? Guess that didn't work out. We'll try one more. Look at my boy, young cat, and here's God. <laughs> Black Panther uppercut. That's what I'm talking about. I got, I got young oh. cat coming in now. What's going what on with do, the nephew? What up, God? You got it, you got it. Peace and unity to everybody. What's up, what's up with it? Did you understand that stuff I was talking about earlier? The Albert Pike and all that? You know, I be here and there. I be here and there. I be trying to grasp as, as much as I can. You know, you know, you go, you get deep sometimes. So I be trying to keep, keep up and shit. Yeah, she saw somebody just said free Big Meech. Y'all know I told y'all what Big Meech's job was to teach the young princes how to handle money without that shit going to their head, making them think it made them better than somebody. Facts. Yeah, free Big Meech. What's up, everybody? Peace. Out here in Cali, I don't. Hey, look, I, I'm looking in the questions. The sister said, Peace, Brother Rod, did you hear the inmates for release? 
from Rahway Prison in New Jersey. That's another knockoff in New Jersey today. What you smoking on, boy? What you smoking on, boy? This from the dispensary right here. Oh yeah, from the dispensary. You had any questions you want to ask? Um, because I can let you fall back and stay nah, man, and I, just listen while you enjoy being high. Yeah, yeah, I'm just, I'm just listening. You know me, I'm just listening. I just was ex <laughs> excited to get on here. Like, so, oh shit. All right, I'm gonna um, yeah, I'm, I'm take listening. one more call before I before I cut us out. All right, all right, peace. Yeah. <clears throat> Think uh this is the longest one. Get some some more energy in here. Hey. Hey, and look, I can't even say it's about time because it's all about time, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> this is good. Okay, let me see where I need to start. How you doing? Please, God. Okay. Tell the people, uh, tell the people your name, where you calling from. This is Karen. I'm in Mississippi. I'm in Biloxi, Mississippi. Oh, okay. Biloxi Blue. Yeah, Biloxi Blue. Look, all my family is from Mississippi Delta, Belzoni, Yazoo, Newton, Mississippi. Mississippi, period. Mm -hmm. So, um, for the car. Huh? So your elders don't say they was ever slaves, do they? Look, let me tell you something. I tell my fiance all the time. Growing up, I never heard my grandmother talk about that. All I know, my my family owned a lot of land, a lot of land in the Delta, and I've been up there plenty of times during the oh. summertime when I would come visit. Um, that we we were all Indian, we were sharecroppers, farmers. You know, nobody. I didn't hear about slavery until school. They can't run that bullshit on motherfuckers in the N.O., down there in Louisiana, down in Mississippi, because we know we've been there. We've been here. You know, the whole out of Africa thing never resonated with me. I could never teach my kids that because it just didn't fit. And yeah. I've been on this path of trying to figure it out, not aggressively, but just letting it come to me by way of my dreams, because that's where I get my messages, right? So I've been trying to... They call us dreamwalkers. Dreamwalkers. I've been doing this all my life. But most recently, most recently, the dreams have gotten um, to the point where I have to tell my thing. I said, because I don't remember anything anymore. Like I can, I wake up and I tell it and then I don't know it anymore. So what you were talking about, you were talking about the 369, the, three, the 369 women. And I started having that dream in particular in 2016. It was, I guess, nine of us in all black. And I was in the center, in the in the ocean. We were all in a circle. And I came out in the middle of those women. And then it paused, and then I had that dream again most recently, like a couple of weeks ago. Same dream. And mm -hmm. then my cousin had the so dream. Let me, let me ask you a question right quick. You said y'all was in the, in the ocean water, salt water? I guess it was the salt water, yeah. Okay, because this is a direct message from Big Mama about uh, Oya, I think it is. Okay. okay. So go ahead. Yeah. And this is, this is twice. This is twice. So just recently, the last dream, 369, it was nine women in my cousin's dream, but they were all waiting on my arrival to make it. We weren't on, we weren't on the water, but they were all waiting on me and they all get same thing. They all gathered around me and I'm still trying to figure, I, I, I want to figure it out because I know that I have a calling. I just haven't tapped into what it really is by, or maybe by, I do know that I'm By birth, you're a high priestess on the land. Yeah. Just I dream. just don't know what to do. <laughs> Look, it's going to come natural to you if you, if you, okay, so you know, 
when you was watching your children play and you was thinking about you know, looking around, making sure there wasn't no, nothing coming and you was just comfortable with them and you was in full mother mode. Yeah. When you get in that energy, that's what's going to teach you the rest of the way. Nobody else ain't going to have to tell you nothing. Well, my kids are older now. You know, the youngest is 13 and the you oldest is 19. Get, you can still get in the energy, though. Okay. You can still get I in the energy. I feel that energy when I'm around other little kids. Right. That's, I can, that's I can, that mother okay. energy. That's, okay. just, that's the feeling that you want to try to... That's why Big Mama always got somebody's baby. Yeah. Because she's steady, <laughs> she's steady operating from that energy of mother. It, okay. She can take you in the kid, the, the girl down the street. She got her kids. She got her grandkids. She got her nieces and nephews. This how can we all know to go back to Big Mama House? Because Big Mama then told us over generations and generations and generations, baby, if anything go wrong, you can always come back to Big Mama House. You can always come back to my dear house. You can always yeah, come I back to Nana house. <laughs> right? You can always come back to Nana right. house. Right? So they've been telling us that for generations. We're not going to never forget that. Right. So when the chief started putting the pieces back to the puzzle, we know that the yellow brick road can only lead to Big Mama House. Yeah. And we know what Big Mama House feel like before we ever get there. Yes. Right? So right. we in the back seat of the car. We going to Big Mama House. We going to Big Mama House. We going to eat some fried chicken and cornbread at Big Mama House. We got our little songs. Yeah. The songs over time became full productions to tell us what's going on on the land, no matter who's singing. Okay. Right? So the blues come from the Mississippi Delta. Most people right. don't know that. Yes. That's right. It used to be called, when it first came up, was called the Delta Blues. The Delta Blues, that's correct. Yeah. Right? Every one of the old blues singers named Son was a chief. Really? Okay. If they had an animal attached to their name, they was a chief of that totem clan, like Howlin' Wolf. Oh, okay. Right? If they had a color, the color tell you which clan they from. Like Yellow Belly. That's an Oshun clan. He's a priest of Oshun singing music. Huh. Okay. So now it's in the culture. You can't get it out. It's like a stain on a white shirt that'll never go away. Right. The, we know how to read the pattern of the stain. Because we've seen the stain so many times that you, it, it, it's just automatic that we know. We ain't new jacks. We're not new here. We grew here. And we and that's what it feels like. I, I know for for me, I feel like I have been repeating this um for many times, right? And now it's to the point where it's time for me to break free of um from behind the scenes, from the shadow and just come out and I, I guess I was just trying to figure out the way in which to do it because it's like I have not pressure on me, but it's pressure on me, right? Because everyone right, sees it in me. It's calling. It's a calling. It's and it's on me, heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know clans, when I the, the clans are reorganizing and reforming, and they're gonna form around a big mama, uh, either a queen or high priestess, or both. Just look, Rod. I had the toad experience like two years ago, right? And when I had that experience, it's like when I went under is what I call it. All I could, all I could hear was that you were a God. And I saw this ceremony. It's like this, I had this, this whole ceremony, these little, I'd say fairies or angels, whatever you want to call them, were building this garment on me. Right. And they were adorning me in all white and gold. And, um, 
I woke up saying, I am God. And it's like, where did I get that from? You know, because I always feel like, you know, you can't be God. But that's, it's like, and then I was told that we're all white, but I didn't do it. It's like, I didn't do what I was told to do. Mm-hmm. But it keeps circling back around, like, I need to do Cause what I'm supposed to do. Because you're going to be in the loop until you listen. Didn't I say that? I, and that's what I said. I feel like I'm, I keep looping around, looping around, looping around. Yeah. You stuck in the it's called monkey flip. When you when you get to the point where you supposed to like say so you get to a fork in the road and you don't want to go the way that the sign telling you, you start monkey flipping. You monkey flipping because you're waiting on somebody else that's coming in the same direction to point you in which direction to go. When I already know the way to go, when is that already, correct? Right. You already know the way. Yeah. But you got to find somebody that you trust more than you trust yourself to tell you that you know the way so you can remember that you know the way. Here's what it is. Okay. Someone that I trust more than I trust myself. Okay. Okay. You think somebody got, got a um um a higher connection to God than you? Yeah. That's I'm, I'm still trying to release that that religious dogma, right? Yes. <laughs> I'm still that's I'm still trying to shake that, but that's what it is. It's like I don't self like worthiness, right? Well, I, why me? I'm on this level and there should be someone else when in actuality but your it's physical, me. Your physical reality won't betray your spirit to rank until you pull rank. When you pull rank, you start making shit happen. How do you pull rank? By accepting who you are in your God form. Big Mama is God. Yeah. You Big Mama on Earth. What that tell you? I'm God. Reflection of Big Mama as above, so below. But as long as you're running from it, God's going to chase you. You're not going to chase yourself. You're going to monkey flip, though. You're a monkey flip. I can't do that. I can't do it anymore. Mm-hmm. I've, been to, I've been trying to get on get this live for you. You know. Mm-hmm. I can't. I can't. I can't. I'm the monkey the loop is- this motherfucker it is. I learned the hard way every fucking time, like Jim Croce say. But the reality of it is, I could only run from me until I got tired. And I got tired. It took a long time because I realized that everywhere I went, this motherfucker was here. And everywhere I ain't, this motherfucker ain't. This I'm 44, and it feels like I've been running for 44 plus years. Yo, you get for you real. Got, so you got the message at the right time because 44 is the angel number. If you don't get okay. your, if you don't take take on in this year your full acceptance of who you are, you check out. And that's what I was told that um the year forty four I needed to I needed to come uh, from out of the under the covers. I needed to come out, and I I'm almost forty five, so that makes sense. Okay. It is what it is. What do I need to do? <laughs> Just, just take my, just take my place on the throne. Yeah, that's deal with your family. Start with your immediate family, and that's and that's what I've been doing. Have family one by gatherings. one. For every excuse, if it's a Christmas party and you don't believe in Christmas, fuck the Christmas. Just throw the party because everybody okay. off work. You know yeah, saying? Easter. Just had an Easter dinner, and that's what we did. And they listen when I, when I speak. They listen. You know, I'm I'm from a family of religious Christian folk, and they they start Christians, but they listen. hear everything I say. Mm-hmm. The baddest preachers in the world. T.D. Jakes ain't shit without his wife. Facts. That's true. Freddie Price wasn't shit without his wife. If his wife got That's up and true. left, Miss Trumbull, they ministry. That's true. You're right. Why is that? At the end of the day, we still know who the fuck we is. 
Yeah. And even if they couldn't come out and tell us who was doing the dirt because they couldn't see it clear enough, they had to tell it at the level they saw it so that we can put the pieces together. They didn't have to be 100% right. They could have been 1% right. But as long as long as one of the chiefs see the 1%, we can pass the message on to the other chiefs. We, uh, Dr. Clark say, in our culture, a thing doesn't have to be true in order for it to carry the truth. Right. It don't have to be a true statement in order to embody the truth of an idea. Right. So we can use children's stories like Aesop's fables to give our children the illustration that they can understand. And it's just a fairy tale, but it don't mean that. There are yeah, I read that as a kid. I yeah. had those in the childcraft books. Yeah. Those used to be children's stories in Egypt. Really? Yeah. That, them bedtime stories, you read them to the, to the boy priest, boy and girl priest, they'd be four, four five years old. If you read Aesop, yeah, I had Fables. the whole I had the whole collection from a little yeah. child. My mom bought those for me, and I read so, them all the time. The dumbed down version is Grimm's Tales. That's the dumbed down version of Aesop's Fables. They knew they was going to really? be dumbing us down. If you read Aesop's Fables, it's, it reads now like college level literature. Now I have to go back and reread them. And if you read Grimm's Tales, it'll read like something you teach teenagers. Okay. But all that shit, children's stories. They're supposed to be uh, uh, mentally mature enough at five to six years old to begin to break down Aesop's fables. And that's how old I was when my mom used I, that's all I read. She read it to me every night. Yeah, she was she was preloading you for your for your position and your mission. You had pretty good grades okay. in school too, didn't you? Yeah. Mm -hmm. she but I didn't really like it, but I did. Yeah, mm -hmm. I didn't like it either, and I had good grades until I decided not to. Yeah, <laughs> and I think that's why I talk about the loop because I was still in society trying to get this and master this. And it never worked out. So that, I thought. That I don't think I was, it was. You you was just going over there to see what that was, to know that that wasn't what you were supposed to do. And that's what I'm realizing now. It wasn't, I wasn't supposed to do it. But you still took something from the lesson that you can use yeah. with what you're supposed to do. That's, yeah, that's right. Because Big Mama going to build you up while you're running from her. She's still going to be building you up to take on your position when you turn around and realize the truth of who you is. You ain't new here. You grew here. Now you got to do is start connecting with other Big Mamas, and that's when you're really going to take off. That's what the 369 is? Yep. Well, the 369 is three pre puberty. Then you have six between uh, puberty and menopause. And then okay. you have nine elder women. So let me ask you a question. You said that I need to connect with the other big mamas, right? Just recently, a few days, I'm, and I'm a dream walker, right? A few nights ago, I had a dream. There were probably about, did I tell you, six or nine women? Mm -hmm. sitting at a table and it looked like they were playing like bid whiz or peanuts or some like old school game right but mm -hmm. they were all in white that's the first dream i've ever had where everybody was in all white and the one lady who i felt that was my granny in the dream she wouldn't look at me directly but i could see the faces of the other women and i guarantee you if i saw them in this press in this realm i could pick them out because they the features were so unique but my dog present day dog actually went under the table and was licking the lady who wouldn't look in my direction but she had a smirk on her he was trying to get her she was trying to get her attention because she was licking her under the table but she would never look directly at me she was looking at an angle but i felt that it was a connection to her and it was about maybe six to nine women at that table in the circle and they were telling me something but i couldn't hear what they were saying yeah so to turn around on the dream 
she ain't gonna she's not accepting you because you haven't accepted yourself yet so she's not giving you her energy so when you had a re the repeat of the dream and she gonna look directly at you that's when you know she gonna be telling you job well done they threw a whole fried chicken dinner party for me and they were all sitting at the table and it's like they were all trying they were talking to me but there was I couldn't hear anything. I couldn't understand what they were saying. But they were That's talking they directly were, to me. Yeah, but they was really talking in telepathy. And because okay. you, because you still haven't accepted who you is, you haven't turned on that mechanism yet. That's why you couldn't hear them. So in order to turn on that mechanism, I need to center myself with other big mamas. Yeah. So y'all eat. Y'all mitochondrial connected. All women are mitochondrial connected. They okay. don't have to be the same race as you, as they call it. They don't have to okay. be the same color as you. But they got to have similar values of family. Okay. You will know them because they're going to be doing the same shit you're doing, trying to uh, have dinners with their families and cook for the grandkids and shit like that. That's my mama. My mama is still here. And, you know, that's that's all she wants to do. Yeah. And you're going to have what you call a scout. Okay. A scout is going to be in the royal house that will be called your handmaiden. Her job is going to be to introduce you into all other women that's doing what you're doing. Like, come on over here. I want you to meet Sister So-and-So from this church. I want you to meet Millie. She a Muslim, but, but she's she good people. Right? That's going to be your scout. She's going to be the one who's going to put all your big mamas from your local area together through you. But she can't do it until you accept yourself. And she's just going to pop up introducing you to people. Okay. Self talk is a bad motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's Thank time you. to put this shit back together on the land. I know it is. I know it's time. Yeah, yeah I've been racking my brain and probably aggra not aggravating my fiance, but he's been helping me through this process because we try we're figuring it out together. Mm -hmm. We are remember they wouldn't let us teach each other openly what I'm telling you openly right now. Yeah. So we had to code it. But it's easier when I could just tell you. Yeah. Now he know how to give you support. He can tell you when you doubting yourself. Yeah, he does, and he does it. Yeah. He does it now. But now you, he now said, you're you more apt to do the follow up. See, it's one thing for somebody to yeah. tell you something, and for you to act on the information than it is for you. Now you know what you know. You know exactly what you're doing. Yeah, you're on a journey of self discovery for you to be the best grandmama, big mama you could be. You got to accept the reality that you got, but that just means that everything outside of you is also with inside of you. As above, so below, as within, so without. Once you understand that, then you don't take none of this shit personal. That's how you get to get all the way to your position. When you stop taking it personal, that means you stop taking sides. Once you stop taking sides, then that puts you in the position to see on a higher level than the average person. Your dreams become more vivid. Right? You take the haze out of them. Yeah, so that's that's just what you do. Okay, you know? I will. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna take one of the guys to take us on home. Mm -hmm. See if he um oh, he might not know.
Hello. What's going on, guy body? Oh wow. I actually made it. That means it is my time too. How you doing, brother? I'm at work. Can you talk? Listen. Yes, I can. Okay. Because I just heard you talking to the goddess about the self knowledge and self recognition. I just wanted to speak on that as well. And peace, love, and light to you before I start. All right. I just wanted to say. Before you get started, I, tell, us, tell us your name and where you calling from. I'm from Philly. My name is Alan Belazare. Well, I go by the name of Ligba, Ligba Ezili, Voodoo, because that's my roots. Well, that's our roots. Born in Haiti, raised in Philly, since I was eight years old. <laughs> yeah. Yep. So um, I wanted to ask you a question. Lately, I've been doing a lot of practicing. And if you pick me, it must have been my time because um, I've been doing a lot of rituals. And I know they record us. And the thing I was always afraid of, one of the rituals, I was listening to one of the guys on YouTube. And also, I think, um, Kalai and also another gentleman, they were talking about how you got to break free from the scaredness. So me having like visions and stuff like that, when I sleep, like the other night I was sleeping, I had a vision. And um, what I saw was like I saw these two women, a darker, a dark skinny lady and a light skinned woman. And then while I was in my room, in my bedroom, I was talking to, I, I just saw one of the ladies and then one of them, it was like she was short and light skinned and then she had like a wedding dress on. And then the other dark skinned woman, she didn't have a wedding dress on and she just, they just can't walk in the room. And then both of them said they were going to marry me. And then when they said they were going to marry me and then the light skin was like, you're not going to marry him without me marrying him as well. And then I just didn't say nothing. I was just following them. And then before I started practicing, like I went back home in 2000 and 2001, I believe. And then I went back home to like recalibrate myself, worship the ancestors and everything like that. It's something that they do. They do. Since you're very knowledgeable, I know you know about it. 14th of August, every year we go to where the ancestors gave us the liberation. And, you know, they call it Bwakaima. In Haitian, they call it Bwakaima. So when the two ladies were there and then I was just looking and watching um the skinny dark lady came in and she as she walked in my main room because I have a I have my orishas and my um stuff in one of my bedrooms and in another room my men meditation room and in my main bedroom that's where the two women walked in and then when they walked in and then before the skinny one walked in the light skinned one with the wedding dress just jumped on the bed before the skinny one jumped in the bed she just walked in and then she looked at me and then she walked back at me and then she said, you're not coming. I just noticed. And then when I blinked, I noticed I was in the room with them before she got in my bed. I noticed a big spider, which is Asani, a big spider next to her. And then the dark skinned lady. And then the crazy thing is, I don't know if you see this a show called the American gods. When I was, when I was in church, I was leaving church. The first guy I saw, the, the black guy that was on the boat that was telling the slaves, like, y'all want to be free, yet y'all don't believe in yourself? Yeah, him, that guy. And then when he saw that, I noticed I started seeing a lot of spiders around me. So I started doing rituals with the spiders because, you know, they say you have orishas that walk with you. And then some of them will walk with you since you were born. And some of them you have to pick or choose which one you want to you want, you want to work with. And yeah. then the lady... And I noticed the spider looked, the lady looked at the spider and then the spider jumped on the lady's shoulder, on her left shoulder. And then she looked at the spider, she looked at me. And then while she looked at me, the spider just jumped at me. And then while the spider jumped at me, I woke up. And then, and then since then, I'm like, I wanted to know what that dream was since I know you decode these type of things. So I wanted to know. <clears throat> Your job is to tie two claims together. There's two right. cleans in your blood. One of them, Nancy, Nancy, is from the Anasazi tribe. And they use the spiders, they totem. They use all kinds of spiders. All spiders is under their totem system. Okay. All right. The 
the one who he jumped on her shoulder, that's her clan. Mm. The other one is from a different clan. That's why they was dressed different. Mm. And it's not uncommon for the lower who you are uh, represented by to have two, to tie two clans together. Okay. Can I can I ask you another question? Well, can I make a comment, a statement? Yeah. All right. So because you know, I grew up in church for thirty two years of my life. I'm thirty five. Grew up in church for thirty two years. Left church like about since two thousand eighteen, and then when I left church, and then I started like practicing voodoo more, and I really started getting back in my culture, and I noticed um, Dumbala which was a snake in my culture and my family, which they said that it's a, you know, it's which the spirits would have walked with you, whatever. So the first thought, when I first started waking up, a snake came and wrapped its body around me and squeezed me like it was going to choke me. And then while it squeezed me, all I had was a whole bunch of cerumen coming out of my ear. And then um, the thing is, when I started looking at the laws, let me show you my book that I have, which is my ritual book. Since everything's exposed, there's nothing for us to be afraid of, right, brother? Because you're the elder. You give us the protection, and we, you give us the knowledge, and we just go do the homework. And if you can see, this is my book, and this is my Orisha. I don't know, for some reason, out of all the laws, this is the Sijis, which is Legba. Mm -hmm. This is the one that keeps coming on to me, and it was so easy for me to make. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, yeah, be, the thing about our culture, when, when, well, in the Haitian culture, they said that I cannot accept him or accept to work with him unless, like you said, unless the other clans from like my mother's side and my father's side, unless I go talk to them and see if it's okay with them to like give me the passage to have that kind of energy to work with that energy. So that ties back into your dream. Hmm. The tying together of the clans can be your mother line and father line. Remember, I told you the clans is in you already. So yes. that makes perfect sense to what your understanding of your lower is. Just follow what you know. I'm just doing what my heart tells me to That's do. That's what you do. So you, like, you, you already like, on the right. So you already on the path. You already okay. on track. Keep doing okay. what you're doing. You know, and just pay attention to the changes and the types of changes to let you know how to calibrate. That's what I wanted to ask you, right? Um, you know how we do meditation and also with yoga. And then, like, over the weekend, like, lately I've been doing fasting. Like, I've been doing 11-day fasting. Like, once a month, I do maybe three to 11 days clean out my body. And then the other day, I was doing, um, I did a, a fast. And then as I was doing a fast and I did some um, shrooms, or should I say ayahuasca. And then when I did the ayahuasca, after I did it, after I did it, today it finally subsided. I, I was having like this headache. It wasn't really this massive headache. It was like my, my, my throat, my palate was like hurting. So these are the type of signs I'm starting to pay attention to. So I don't know if it was my kundalini that was rising or if it's like, you know, my third eye that's discalcifying because I've been drinking a lot of pine pine tea. Because um pine tea, pine tree, I know it's good for the pine cone, right? It's a pine cone. So it's good for your um pineal, pineal gland. So yes, yeah, so and because of brother life wave, because I follow all of my brothers, so I kind of got that knowledge. And then since then I've been doing the tea and then I've been like mixing teas and everything like that. So I wanted to know, like, why is it that, like, I was having all these body aches, like, or you in just the told me. Okay, so then that means my mind was correct. So then my heart was right. Stop so then second guessing okay. yourself. There you go. That's where I'm at with it. Okay. Yeah, stop second guessing yourself. Your Lord talking to you. That's all I can tell you. Oh, talking to you. He you just, did. You just gotta, you gotta accept and honor that. Why is it that when it came upon me the last time, it said, I am that I am? That was the word that was coming out of my mouth. Because it's telling you to time, be still and know that you God. That's all that kept came out of my mouth. Right. Like when I was, be still like, and know that you God. Look, you're mm -hmm. on the right path. 
Yeah. Right now, you walk, you working from the position of second guessing yourself, which is a part of an insecurity. Overcome that shit. So how do I work on that more? Believe in yourself. The more you believe in yourself, the stronger you overcome it. You're doing everything on, on the path. You're getting all of the right feedback for the lower that you mentioned, for the mm -hmm. uh, the dream that you mentioned. All of this is just telling you the right path. You're on the right path. You're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Just don't let nobody come in trying to tell you to take a side. Take a side with your lower. He going to keep the rest of the motherfuckers at bay because he don't play. Okay. He Can like to fuck motherfuckers up. Yes. Can you please define what you mean by take a side? I wanted to ask you that question. I'm glad that you mentioned it. So be um, elaborate. Okay, on that so point. most people are persuaded to accept the persuasive argument that's not mm -hmm. rooted in the truth. Okay. That's dogma. Okay. Yo, if it don't feel right in your heart, fuck that shit. But you in a unique position because you have one of the lowest talking to you. I want to speak to him the way I'm speaking to you right now. He talking to you, to you just him. ain't listening. Mm. He, he, he gonna smack you upside your head if you don't if he keep talking to then you, he, keep ignoring. Let me try to listen. I'm not yeah, trying to ignore. When he smack you upside your head, get... he don't have your attention then because he he don't have you know, as long a patience as some of the other lords, and he want to smoke, so he don't care if you get mad at him. No, I want to smoke myself. That's why yeah. you picked me. Because right. this is the first time I was on Instagram, and that was one of my fears to conquer, is to get on Instagram. It's crazy. I'm the last one you pick. So right <laughs> then and there, this is my opening. And then I'm talking to the great one. So listen, I want the smoke. I want all the fucking smoke. So I'm so, just, I just, see, look, the thing is, I was look. looking for an elder to give me the right guidance, or, because, you know, you got You the fucking elder. Mm. You the elder you've been Ashe. looking for. I say. I say, I so now it. look, this is what you got to do now. Find out his favorite offering. Give it to yourself. Then he going to talk to you real then. He mm. going to know you ready. His favorite offering. My mind just told me a banana and candy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, being, I'm telling you what's, look, what's just, processing right now. Just whatever is, whatever he tell you. Okay. When you follow the instructions, the more you listen to them, the more they will communicate with you. That's what that's why I and the clearer the communication to be. It ain't gonna be no fucking secret because you fucking with the right one now, because he's gonna smack you silly if you don't pay attention. You you must be just like me, a hard headed motherfucker that got to do it I your am. way. I am. Yeah, because he I, that's I am. yeah, all us with those warriors for Loa's. Well, we hard hit it. With a he good gonna heart. get your attention, mm. but he got your attention. You already doing. Now you just gotta fine tune it. Like the radio slightly off the channel, you just gotta get the sound to come in clear. And then that's why I need my brothers and sisters to put me in the right. Gonna tell you everything to do. Mm. Give him his offering, but give it to yourself if it's a food offering. Whatever his favorite food is, make that shit. Mm. Mm. For yourself. See, see, this is where I had doubted, right? When it when it came out, I I, I um I'll take I, I'll I'll message you after we leave when I get home because I'm at work and then I'll send you the um my loas um, my sigils. The thing is, when I first started getting into my 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 culture, or should I say, my nature. And um, what I realized, like when I was asking other people this kind of question that I was asking you, they kept like giving me the runaround, like giving me the two sides. Like you said, I guess that's probably one of the things that made me doubtful too. Because you know, when people have been in doing something longer than you, and you think that they should have the more knowledge than you, so they but giving they you might not have a connection than yours. Uh, they See, the all of us who are who got lowest attached to us. My big mama baptized me with the Baron. Right? Mm. And the Baron is the Ogun. Mm. So when for, 
we supposed to wake up to who they is or they going to wake us up to who they is. And when they wake mm -hmm. us up to who they is, they going to smack the shit out of us. I got smacked by his ass. So you doing what you supposed to be doing. Just do what I'm telling you. And he going to come to you. Okay. He going to talk just like my man from American Gods. And I've been waiting. That's the thing. Cause Orlando said, Jones. Can... Yeah. yeah. He <laughs> going to talk just like that. He going to say, ah, oh, yeah. so now you want to fuck with a motherfucker, huh? I've you going to talk to one of the him. big brothers. Now me... you want to fuck let... with me, huh? He going to let me get. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, when I was in school, right? Even when I was in church, you know, that's when I was like, I never really, I stopped really going to church. Even when I was in church, when people used to mess with me, because I would used to fight a lot. And then when I was young, the first thing I would resolve to is like, I'm going to do some voodoo on your ass. And then after I did that, after I said it, I'm like, why is it that if I'm going to church, yeah, if I'm fighting a motherfucker, the first thing I say I'm going to do on their ass is voodoo. So I'm like, something, see, that never made sense to me. Well, they so, be doing think, all the voodoo in the church, but don't tell you they doing it. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> A bunch of hypocrites. That's why I left, because I, I was the number one hypocrite. And another thing I wanted to add, the last thing, because I got to confess, because you're old going and we're talking and we're in front of the public eye. When I was younger, I said that I would never serve them when I was in church. And now that I left church, I said, if I ever go and serve voodoo or do that, it's for me to dissipate on this earth, off of this earth. Now, I'm asking you, do you think that my words, because, you know, words are powerful. You think those my words could be some kind of blockage from that then when I was saying it or because of my no, ignorance, I didn't are, knowing better. Those words that you were speaking then, it was organized in your mind for what you needed to become in order to accept who you was. Mm. All of the warriors got a harder time than everybody else, though. But we don't we don't bitch and complain about it. We just do that shit because that's what we do. We came in this bitch for a fight, nigga. Where the fight at? Right? So that's part of yeah. your fight. Oh shit. Yeah. But all of the answers that you asking me, ask your lord. He gonna tell you and you ain't gonna have to ask a motherfucker nothing. He gonna Damn. send you on any anything you wanna know. If you don't trust what you what what occurs to you, he gonna send a reference your way. Or send you where to reference at. Trust me, I know from experience. My you got a question, he's gonna tell you what the answer is. If you don't trust the answer, he gonna say, Well, you don't believe me, motherfucker. Go look over here and get this book. Mm. And they're gonna tell you the same thing I just told you. But the only thing you be mm. doing, really, is a lot of our people, we can't tell nothing without the references because they won't believe us no more. We come from an oral tradition. Our words is more powerful than anything you can motherfucking write in a book. Yes, because your word is bomb. This is right. how we so, deal with each other back then. But we've been dealing with deceivers. Mm. So now, and I, a, and I had a dream about deceiver. I called somebody a deceiver the other night. Yeah, and all well, I kept saying is a deceiver, deceiver, right deceiver. That shit. Yeah, that's that's character. It's perfect. Mm. And he'll show you exactly who it is if you ask. Who's the deceiver, huh? Yeah, he I did show ask you. him. He gonna show you exactly who it is if you ask. Him. Just follow. Oh, just feed, feed him on the ritual on the um. Oh, on no, the I've been feeding his ass. I mean, give him his, his motherfucking. Ass. Give him his motherfucking uh, meal. He gonna start mm -hmm. talking to you. He gonna tell you anything else he want. He gonna let you know. He part of who you is. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is. You you just follow who you is. You're gonna be led you straight. Thank you, thank you. The love. I really appreciate that. Yeah. All right, man. I'm about to get on up out of here now. I enjoyed talking right. to you though. It was one love. Is it okay if I message you? And then yes. I can message yes. you what I okay. It will be my name on Instagram is Leg by Z, and then okay. Grandmaster J. All right. Thank you very much for your time. One yep. love. One love. All right.
All right, y'all. I'm getting a little tired now. Uh, now I want to make this too too long where people don't watch the whole thing. But appreciate y'all being here. Y'all see how we talk on the land, what we talk about, how we go over the anomalies to point out the deceptions on the enemy's ass, and how we stand in unity and we help each other where we get stuck. Each one teach one. We all gonna reach some. Free Lag Hoover is the battle cry. And this is a black girl magic, a side of Shakur knot on an Ogun off of Alegba to bring this shit to a motherfucking close. So fuck they Scottish right. Fuck they motherfucking Albert Pike. Fuck they George Washington, traitor ass, switcheroo ass nigga. All them motherfuckers can go to fucking burning H-E double hockey sticks if they can find that place because I ain't been able to find it. And I'd have been all through the Astros and ain't found that motherfucker yet. I just wanted to see if it was eternal. Apparently it ain't. It's an illusion. Dogma. So we're going to put our morals over their dogma and bust that shit in the head and bring this shit to an end off of an Anastasi can. Let these spiders sew the motherfucker together. You understand? It's like Gulliver's Travel. Yeah, black girl magic. I put that shit on everything I motherfucking do. That's the motherfucking little, little princess of voodoo. Here we go. Once again, from me to you. All right, Pete. We out. I'm going to save this live. And uh, sometimes if I go too long, they won't let me save it. So I'm going to save this one. Y'all watch it. Peace to the clans across the land. Free Lay Hoover. <laughs>